Welcome to the Younger Members Committee Career Information Session number three, when Hannah Shaw speaks to Gina Evans about essential networking skills for young lawyers. Hello to everyone who has joined us already. My name is Han Shaw and I'm a senior associate in ANL Goodbody in Disputes and Investigations and I'm also a member of the Younger Members Committee. Tonight I'm joined by Jean Evans very kindly. Jean is an accomplished networking expert who has agreed to share her experience and wisdom with us so I'm primed to get as many tips as I can from you tonight Jean. Um, we'll have time at the end for questions but we're also happy to take questions as we go via the chat function um, I think you can also raise your hand um, so just let us know if you have any queries along the way. Gina, I thought we might start by you just telling us a bit about yourself and how you came into networking. Were you always a natural networker? It's safe to say I was not always a natural networker and I'm probably still not a natural networker. I'm a bit of an anti-networker, which is ironic considering what I do, but I will explain why. So my background is tourism. I was 22 years in corporate, so I worked with Board Fulcher, so the Irish Tours Board when it was Board Fulcher back in the days because I am that old. And I worked out in the markets out in Milan and we were headed over Malta, Greece and Cyprus. And then I moved out to New York. I was part of the transition to Tourism Ireland. Um, so working for the island of Ireland and working out in Tourism Ireland in New York and I did business tourism so developing all the relationships between Ireland and the US for conferences meetings and incentives then I moved back to Ireland I ran the convention bureau for five years and then I got headhunted again and I became what is known as a professional conference organizer and um, so I did that for the guts of 10 years and um Coincidentally, the Law Society was one of our, our clients in, in MCI, actually, as it happens. So I, I suppose life continues. Um, I had had a number of children. I got made redundant on the back of my third child, which is always wonderful when you have two other toddlers and a new baby and they say, hey, you've got no job, no money. And that was a bit of a, hmm, right, uh, come to Jesus moment, let's say, because I was a career corporate girl for life or so I thought until I was told otherwise. And I then went to work for my other half who has a business in a completely different area, managed print services. So I had to learn around the technology, printers, scanners, leasing contracts, asset financing, all areas that I didn't think I ever needed to know anything about. Printers either worked or they didn't work and that was the sum total of my knowledge. And um, so little did I know it was, there was a lot to it and I learned that, but the realization came that when I stepped out of corporate and when I wasn't in that world, although I was well networked within tourism and business tourism, I didn't know anybody. And that was a real, hmm, I don't know anybody. Uh, I better get out and start meeting people. So I joined a chamber and then I joined uh, Network Ireland and there was different women in business networks. I joined Dunleary Chamber, Dublin Chamber. I joined referral networks and I was probably a part of about eight or nine different networks and going to hundreds of events um, over the course of the few years. And what I realized was that after about three years, not only was I now becoming very well networked, was that my confidence had grown exponentially. Now, I'm going to put that in context of I used to run a large team. I had 26 people in my team up to 2016. I had a large turnover. I was responsible for doing and uh, bringing in the business and the conferences. I would get up in front of an auditorium and deliver pitches for Ireland against other um, countries, you know, bidding for business to come into the convention center or the RDS. And on the outside, people would say, oh, you're, you're very confident. And I was confident in my ability to deliver a message, to convey a business case, all of that. But I wasn't confident in me. But what I learned through the networking when I stood back and watched and realized, even though it was me, myself and I, my confidence had grown. And what I realized was I had become far more self-aware. That was key. And I had many, many aha moments. And I thought, I want to share this with other people. So I started working with networks and setting up networking groups. Then I started writing about it last year. And then by September, I thought, actually, do you know what? I want to go and speak and train on this because although people are told you need to network, they don't actually know what that means. They don't understand what that process looks like. 
And for some people, they go, yeah, yeah, I'm dying to get out and meet people. And for other people that are going, oh, my God, I'd actually rather turn, um, cut off my right arm right now than walk into a room full of people. And I think a lot of people also equate networking with going into a room of hundreds of people that they don't know. And I'm going, that can be it, but it's also not it. Um, and I just thought I would like to help people. Now, let me put another layer of context on this. Um, I used to be, I'm, I'm naturally shy. Um, I'm also an introvert. And why that's important is that I moved my dial from pathologically shy, where I was unable to talk to people, to being able to talk to people, but also being able to present and communicate and pitch. Um, but also then learning last year that I'm an introvert and understanding the impact that has on my networking journey. And that was part of why I went, oh my Lord, there are so many shy people who think they can't and network and introverts who think they can't network and they're intimidated by extroverts. And I thought, actually, if we reframe it and help people understand what the journey and the process looks like, yes, you can. And why? Because I'm a testament that yes, you can. And I wanted to share that knowledge and that voice and that perspective with people to help them reframe what seems like a scary notion and say, networking is a skill. So none of you on the webinar this evening became solicitors overnight. You went to college, you studied, you did your exams, you learned, it's a skill, you kept learning and networking is another skill and it's so fundamental. So what I wanted to talk about from, I suppose the way I looked at it and Hannah and myself, we had a little discussion about this earlier. And one of the things that I felt, I, I wish somebody had told me some of these things when I was starting out because it would have made my life an awful lot easier in terms of dealing with anxiety, not feeling that I was good enough, feeling that I had to constantly compete with extroverts because I'm just not that person. So I wanted to frame our sort of few minutes together. I can't teach you all about networking in half an hour, but I wanted to reframe some of the things that I think are really, really important when you're starting out. Number one, you need to network. Whether you like it or not, you need to network. So get going and get started. That's that's thing number one. And I want to make this as practical as well as, as possible so that you get the most out of it. But do put your questions in because it's a safe space and it's a great time to ask the questions that may have just been sort of niggling at you. Do ask them because I'm very happy to answer them. There's a big, there's a big I suppose, abyss between knowing and doing. And a lot of people, when they go and do courses, they're what I call knowledge collectors. A lot of people collect knowledge and they do course, of course, after course, after course, and they'll collect a lot of knowledge, but they don't do an awful lot of doing. So one of the things that I want you to do after this evening is start implementing some of the things that I'm talking about. And there's small moves and small moves of that sort of moving that dial forward that are going to help you in your career. And if you're starting out, and it doesn't matter whether you're first year or seven years into your journey, you have got to be connected. And you want to be connected because networking is like compound interest on your pension. It only works with time. So you've got to give it time and it's got to be a journey you're willing to undergo for the rest of your career and potentially the rest of your life, depending on what you want to do. So I don't mean that to be overwhelming, but I just mean this is where you need to start. But start well and then you build up the skill and you become more resilient in it as well. And it's going to help you. So within a career context, there are statistics and there's if you have a pen and paper, there's a statistic or there's an acronym called PI, and it's performance, image, and exposure. And some of the statistics, depending on what you read, there's a statistic for everything, but depending on what you read, getting on in your career is the performance part. And a lot of people will think, well, if I perform well, if I work really, really hard, I'm gonna get that promotion, I'm gonna get access to that project. But what if I were to tell you that performance is only 10% of your ability to succeed? Where does the other 90% lie? So if performance is only 10% and you think it's all about performance, I'm here to say it's not. It's only a small part of it. So yes, you do need to do it and you need to get known for what you know, what you're doing. But the next bit is your image. And that's 30% is working on your personal brand. And your personal brand is how you show up. And it's what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. And there's very sort of simple ways of, you know, easy ways of getting into this. You know, it's it's going to the meetings, it's 
having a digital presence and I think LinkedIn is absolutely key for this absolutely key and any social media uh, work and, and engagement that you have will be absolutely key the other 60 percent is exposure 60 percent is exposure so if you were think about this sort of analogy if you were in the middle of a bog and you were like you were like a lighthouse and you're shining bright because that's your performance and you're shining bright but nobody else can see you this is what you're doing to your career if you don't network. So now what you need to look at is, right, who do I know? Who knows me? Do they know what I know? So here's where networking becomes strategic. So if you start working and creating an audit of who knows you, do enough people know you? Do the right people know you? Who are the right people that need to know you? Because if they don't know you exist and they don't know the quality of your work, they can't help you go up the career ladder or invite you on to other projects. Now, there's a few other things. You know, there, there, there's, there's so many different elements to this. What I would also say then is look at your networking internally and externally. So a lot of people internally would think, right, well, I have all of my colleagues um so i see them at the water cooler or whatever so the two things i would say do not narrow yourself down to just your pod or just the other solicitors go and talk to somebody in marketing go and talk to somebody in accounts get to know the other people in the business that make the business happen extend lateralize your contacts for a couple of reasons one your clients are not the solicitors so you need to get to know other people and you need to be able to talk to other people. So they are also people who can be potential mentors and sponsors and who can recommend you into projects if they know what you know. So they can potentially refer you into other people. So I'd say then as well, and I think this is sort of overlooked, is get up to date with your LinkedIn profile. If you haven't got one, get one. I would put it in your diary every quarter to update it because you'd be surprised at how many things you do, you do, excuse me, you what you achieve. It might be a new certification, it might be a new client project you've worked on, something that you can put through your LinkedIn profile. But put it in your diary, literally diarize it in Outlook and say, look at my network, look at my LinkedIn profile. It'll give you an opportunity to review it with fresh eyes to see is it up to date. What I would say then is make sure you're connected with everybody in your organization because people move and change for lots of different reasons because life happens. So I'm suddenly you might say, actually, I want to go and start up my own firm or I want to work in this firm for the next 10 years, but then I'm going to move back to Galway and I want to set up my own firm or um, my going back to the family practice in Cork. Life will happen, but there's two things that you own within your professional um life and one is your linkedin profile so no matter how many times you change and no matter how many times other people change you're always going to be connected through linkedin but a lot of people will say well sure hannah works over there i don't need to be connected with her well hannah i can always work over there so get connected with her and put this in your diary that you have linkedin open every day and you spend 10 or 15 minutes minutes connecting with people. So connect with people that you're working with, connect with suppliers, connect with your stakeholders, connect with people that you want to get to know. So this is where you need to start getting strategic. Now look externally. And I think a lot of people, when it comes to the career side of things, and this is sort of my, uh, my personal observation, a lot of people, when it comes to networking in a career, they're waiting for permission. And I'm going, well, networking, when you build your network, your network is something you own. It's like your LinkedIn profile. You bring your network with you. This is your responsibility and your, you are accountable for building up this network. So it is something that you own. So what I would always say with it in terms of networking is networking is something you do for tomorrow, not for today. It is your ability to future-proof yourself. It is your ability to learn. So let's say for argument's sake, you are you, you think you're going to work in the corporate field of, of law for the next five, 10 years, and then you have aspirations of setting up your own company. 
if you didn't network, um, if you didn't network between now and then, or you just left it to chance, when you come to set up your company, you don't have the resources and contacts to set that up seamlessly. And you're starting from scratch. Whereas if you start building up your network now, you bring all of that network, those knowledges and the, uh, knowledge and those contacts with you. I think there are a lot of people who would wait for their manager or their boss to let them network. And I'm going, why? It's your responsibility. So don't wait for permission because learning to network is one of the biggest investments you can ever make in yourself because it will give you confidence. It will give you contacts. And another way, of, I suppose, reframing networking, a lot of people hate the word networking, but think of it as building relationships and then it's a lot less scary. And there are lots of different types of networks. And I think that networking, you know, if, if you're within the law society, there's lots of different events of solicitors networking with solicitors. But remember, you do need that because it's peer-to-peer -peer learning, you need it for CPD, but they're not your clients. So where are your potential clients? Where are they networking? That's where you might want to go and network because they may be future customers. But when you go out into structured and formal networking groups, so it might be chambers, it can be business referral networks. This is where you start building relationships where you can help bring in business or you want to set up your own business down the line and you can have um, you're starting to meet prospective clients or people who can refer you into business because that's how it works out in the business world. A lot of stuff happens by referral, but people are only referred in when they're known. So networking is predicated on three pillars and it's no like and trust so you have to get known and this is back down to what I said at the start it's the time aspect you have got to put the time in to get known people will not like you until they get to know you and they won't trust you until they like you and if you want to get referred in whether it's in a career or outside whether you want to get referred in to a client to be brought in on a project, whatever your aspiration is, people can only refer you in when they know you, they like you, they support you, and they want to see you succeed. Because remember, Jean, if I could yeah. stop you there, sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting no no in your mid flow. But I suppose one of the queries I would have, particularly for younger members, and I would see even with younger solicitors on the team I work on, they might have joined um, as a qualified solicitor or a team in the last year. And they could be a year and a half you know, qualified at this point and haven't met many people or maybe have only met the partners on their own team even a handful of times in person because they're working remotely. So how do you suggest they go about raising their visibility or their profile, even internally, so that they can be considered for, you know, the next project, the next case that comes along. Um, because I suppose you have to build an internal profile even to build up that experience at the beginning of your career. Um, and it's certainly, I think, more daunting for them to have to sort of pick up the phone. Do they just have to kind of push themselves to do it? What I would suggest is my, my first protocol would be um connecting digitally so follow you know on social media connect on linkedin and this is why it's really really important there's a few things that that starts doing one you're building up your connections which is you know you you want to be doing that consistently so even if you set yourself a goal of i'm going to connect with five people every day then you're you're actively and dis, you create that discipline of building up your network the next thing i would say is when you're connecting do not, and please do not just press connect. Put in a personalized message about why you're connecting with that person. So if you've met at an event or you're working in the same company or whatever it is, connect and personalize the message. And the reason being is if life happens and people change, you've got an aid memoir as to why you're connected with that person. That's really, really important because you can get into a stage where people say, oh, I see you're connected to Hannah Shaw. Yeah, I don't know where I met on the show. I don't know why I'm connected with her. But if you've got a message in there that stays in the archive, it'll, it'll answer that. So in terms of the first thing I would do is connect with people on LinkedIn. So if this is internally or externally and comment and engage with the content that they're posting. You start posting your own content. So I would do sessions when I'm doing LinkedIn training. I would do sessions on the personal profile thing. And the next point is the content and the engagement and less than 1%, even though there's 740 million LinkedIn users in the world, 
less than 1% of people post content. A lot of that because people feel they don't have content to share, but you might have content to share. So consider sharing content. But if other people are sharing content, start commenting on it, tagging people and supporting the content that people are putting out there. This will create that visibility factor at a digital level. And likewise, if you are on Twitter or Instagram or whatever the other social media profiles, what it does is start building up those connections, start get, getting your name out there. Um, it starts raising your profile. And in marketing, if, you're, if you go into the marketing world, it takes people 10, 12, 15, depending on the product service, it takes them, let's say 12 to 15 touch points before they'll even remember you. So don't underestimate how engagement and connection can influence what you're doing. But even there's small things, for example, like when we go on to, on to Zoom and roll on Zoom meetings, you can go down the, the three little dots at the, the top of the tile where our, our photos are, and you can press rename and you can put your full name. So, and you can put your company. It's a little bit of branding, it's a little bit of micro networking, and it's a little bit of micro marketing, but it helps people remember who you are and connect you in. And it's a little bit of helping that along. What I would say then is that in the business world, when you go out into business networking, there's a thing called one-to-ones where people actively engage in setting up one-to-one -one meetings with other people in the networks. So this is something that you can do. And I think that if you start doing that, and even if you say, listen, hey, I'd love to jump on a Zoom call with you for half an hour, just get to know you. Be proactive in that because if you've got 100 people and 98 people don't do that and two people do, very quickly you start standing out as somebody who's making an effort to get to know other people. So and that's important, do you think, Jean? Sorry, I keep interrupting you. That's right, go for it. But, but that kind of strikes a chord with me because I think probably when I speak to maybe more junior members on my team, they're like, well, I don't want to interrupt you. And, you know, you're working in your bedroom in your house and I'm working in my bedroom in my house and I'm only in the middle interrupting your day and it's, it's an interference with the work you're trying to get through maybe. But actually, anyone I've spoken to at the more senior end, including, like, say, my own partners, are very much willing and, and would be delighted to have a half hour coffee. And then might say to you, OK, I can't do it today. I can do it next week. But very important to get that one on one FaceTime, particularly when you're working remotely, I think. And it's probably one of the small yeah. things that younger members can do on a very small scale and maybe a less daunting scale than, like you say, walking into a big conference with 100 people you don't know is start scheduling small one-on-one -on -one coffee breaks with people that are close to your business area or you know a client that you talk to all the time um, and just say I just want to catch up on the social way that probably builds rapport and connections um, that you can then build upon I think yeah that's I great think, actually the one-on-one -on -one. yeah I think the I think there's there's a couple of things in that um and imposter syndrome starts setting in and imposter syndrome you'll have to trust me goes both ways from the top down where people think I'm expected to know all of these things and therefore they feel they're further to fall and from the start people have imposter syndrome going sure I don't know anything I'm not going to have conversation point break it all down that's just making it way more difficult than it needs to be break it down this is going one human being connecting with another human being and having a conversation and if you start reframing it like that and you reach out to somebody, you know, and it might be a, a partner, it might be a manager. So for the younger um, list, younger uh, associates in the in the in the audience, what I would say is reach out. People would be flattered; they'll be delighted to give that time. And as Hannah said, if they don't have time tomorrow, just say, "Hey, would you be interested?" Or would you have free time, um, thirty minutes next Wednesday, and we could just have a Zoom call and, and have a coffee. I'd love to get to know you. Um, I see where you're at in the business. I'd like to know how you got there. And people will offer that mentorship or that sort of coaching call, but it's a really good way of just getting to know people. And I think when, when we're in a corporate environment, we tend to think it has to be all business, but actually it doesn't. So if somebody's got kids or somebody's into golf or camogie or, you know, uh, sailing, whatever it is, and we start finding out about those softer elements of somebody, this is where people become human. And that's where we start building up those connections. Um, and I think why all of that becomes really, really important is that if somebody refers you in to work on a project or sponsors you and they're talking about you when you're not in the room, it's their reputation at stake if they refer you in. 
So back to know, like, and trust. You have to understand that you it's, up, it's your responsibility to get known. So now work at how you're going to do that. So what, one of the other aspects that I would bring in that I think is really, really important and why it's really important back into my own introduction is knowing whether you're an introvert or an extrovert is really, really key. And introverts tend to think they can't network because they don't have the same energy and the same um, uh, facing, with, you know, I suppose the, the interaction skills with, with other people. And extroverts tend to, you know, they can walk into a room and talk to loads of people and they're full of the conversation and they're shaking hands left, right and centre. And to introverts, that becomes really, really intimidating. So I'm going to give you two different um, things to think about. One, if you're an introvert, and you know you're an introvert, great. If you don't, find out. And there's a very, there's a, a quick test. You can do deep and meaningful tests. There's a thing called DISC, um, which is sort of a deep and meaningful um, study on, on your personality type. Um, but if you want to do something free, just 16, so the, the number 16, 16personalities.com. And there's a little a free survey thing and it'll start giving you an indication, just some, a free idea just for you to understand. And the reason this is really important is it'll start tempering and helping you manage your energy. Now, why, why do I say energy? When, I, when I'm chairing or speaking, when I'm on and I'm talking about something I love and I'm passionate about, I will lose all track of time. Absolutely. I said to Hannah earlier, she's gonna to have to rein me in because I have to talk about this all the time. <laughs> but what I feel in advance is what's called anticipatory anxiety. So people don't see what it takes for me to arrive or what it takes for me to get into the room. But once I'm in the room, game on. And it's something that you, the more you learn about yourself, and this is what networking has taught me, the more you learn about yourself, the easier it is to manage. So a few of the things that happened to me in particular last year when we came on to Zoom, that I was doing an awful lot of face-to-face -face networking pre-COVID and I would get into the car and I might be on the M50 or I might be going to driving to a client meeting or what have you. And what I didn't realize how important that downtime was for me because when we went into COVID, I literally went from Zoom call to Zoom call to Zoom call to Zoom call. And by May, after two months of doing that, I, I remember the, the beautiful weather last year and lying out in the grass in my garden thinking, oh my God, I was not, I was less tired giving birth three times than I was after two months of Zoom. I was in bits, I was in bits and I could not understand it. And what I realized was I was giving myself no downtime, no downtime whatsoever. So if you're an introvert, what you need to do is manage your energy. Save your energy beforehand, know exactly when you need to be on, whether it's for a client meeting, for a one-to-one, -one, and make sure you do not schedule anything for straight afterwards that involves talking to other people, because you need to take in all of the information, you need to process it. And I think this is a really important thing for managers to understand whether the team is made out of extroverts or introverts. Introverts will tend to observe and stand back and not be very forthcoming about opening and sharing their opinions on things, especially when they're there with extroverts because they can't compete from an energy level. But the more you understand about yourself and the more managers understand about their teams and the dynamic and how they fit, the more they can help empower them. But if you are an introvert, what I would say to you is, it is your superpower. So the way I, I fashion it is, if you're walking into a room, whether it's a cocktail party, whether it's a Zoom call, it doesn't really matter and you're feeling a bit of anxiety. Think about this. Being an introvert is your superpower. So imagine this imaginary cape on and superwoman or superman. And it doesn't matter. Put your hands on your hips and go, I can do this. This is my superpower because it really, really is. And I'll tell you why. Because introverts are exceptional listeners. They're extraordinarily observant. They process everything and they build amazing relationships and they've got really really core and if you want to build a business and build a team being an introvert is actually such an asset but most introverts don't realize it's such an asset to the company and to the team and most companies don't realize that they need to help their introverts unleash their power but let me tell you who is an introvert so darwin einstein hillary clinton barack obama elon musk um warren buffett bill gates I could go on and on and on. Beyonce, 
all enter birth. Why? Because they have acquired power. Their creativity comes from their downtime when they're not talking to people. And you don't know an awful lot about them, but all of that innovation happens when they're processing information. And this is why you know, those relationships and all that information, the processing, that's where innovation comes from. So they're actually such an asset to companies, but they need to learn to help unleash them. Um, Jean, there's a question we've just had yeah. from a participant. Sorry, I would be saying if you're an in-house solicitor and you don't need to bring in clients as such, so you're not doing direct business development, which is a large part of our role. And I think a lot of solicitors kind of almost happily forget that they're salesmen and just want to concentrate on the work that we do in the first instance. But if, you know, if no one's paying for the work and there's no clients, there's no, you're not doing any soliciting yeah. or, you know, like you, you do have to do it. And it's probably much more important they acknowledge it all at the time and a bigger part of our role than we acknowledge it all at the time but is it still relevant for your career development in-house do you think where you're not you don't have that kind of business development element or external clients to bring in yeah 100 percent. for for a couple of reasons you don't know where you'll be tomorrow you just don't because none of us do life happens circumstance happens family happens you just don't know but if you and, and go back to Building your network is for tomorrow, not for today. And when tomorrow is the rest of your life. If you start meeting people, I think one of the things that networking does, it gives you, it helps you learn. It helps you learn in a way that I never really comprehended until I got out networking. It builds your confidence. It's about diversifying the people that you're hanging around with. It's diversifying those opinions, but also what it does, it helps you troubleshoot and you become a problem solver. So when there's a problem in the company that needs to be solved and you know people who know people or know people who can solve that and you bring that in, go star in the corner there. So it's about different perspectives, but networking is always, always relevant because you do not know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So the biggest thing is, it is about future-proofing yourself. And this is why I say it's compound interest. It's like compound interest on your pension. It only, only works with time. You've got to invest in those relationships. Because I think that, you know, when the I see a lot of people in the business world, when it comes to sales, they think, well, I've joined a network, I've paid the money, therefore I'm entitled to business. And when business is not an entitlement, business is earned because you've got to be a good person to refer business into, you know, like and trust, all of that side of things. But there's another sort of trio of words that are bandied around, but credibility or visibility plus credibility equals profitability. So if you have to audit yourself, where are you visible? How are you making yourself credible? So are you proving that you're a subject matter expert? Because that's what leads to profitability. Now, what I would say about profitability is, a lot of people would say profitability is the dollar sign, the euro sign. And I'd say, well, it might be a career promotion. It might be um, building your team. It might be access to a new project. It might be getting on a business trip with the partner so they get to know you. Profitability can mean lots of different things because it's as varied as what success looks like for each and every one of us. But visibility, are you visible? Who do you need to be visible to? Are you building up your credibility? How are you proving that you're the subject matter expert? And what will profitability look like for you? But profitability, you're only ever going to understand what profitability looks like for you if you've got a goal in mind. So what's your goal? What's your life goal? And it might be an interim goal. It might be an end goal, a life goal. But what are you working towards? Because if you don't have a goal, then you're working aimlessly and you're like a ship without a rudder and it's you're, you're not steering it and you're not directing it. But if you've got a goal and you've got a destination, then you know you're going to start working out what those steps are to create that success and create that profitability. But in, that's a long answer to that question about in-house. Yes, absolutely, because it can be about troubleshooting. It can be about your future. It can be about people sponsoring you because you, are become, you become that go-to person. But you only become that when you listen to different voices and different perspectives and I think there's a huge you know in in Ireland we've a we've a, a, a big issue around diversity so we need diversity of people we need diversity of mindset we need diversity of opinions mm -hmm. this is something that networking will give you because you start meeting people from all walks of life so I'm going to hone in on what Hannah said there about the business development side of things 
Business development is, you know, if you're tasked with that business development side of things, then it is about getting out networking. And there's lots of different types of networks. So it might be chambers, it might be business referral networks, and there's lots of different types. And it's about getting out there. But who, you know, so it might be that you're looking for um, your company to pay the membership fees for particular networks and you need to put a business case. But if the business case, I'm going to bring in more business, I'm going to say they're probably going to say yes. But then it's about learning the skill of getting out there to talk to people and what that looks like, but also tempering um, and managing expectations that is not going to happen overnight. Networking isn't something that will solve a problem overnight. It's something that you do over time. But yeah, and, and speaking of time, Jean, we're probably coming towards the end of our time for this session, but I, I thought I might um, just open the floor to questions and start with just one question of my own. Which is, I suppose, in terms of, <laughs> I'm going to have to steal myself after this um, conversation and kind of say, in terms of practical tips, um, things we could do. I mean, do I say to myself, is it just a matter of diarying that time, you know, half an hour on a Monday every week, where I say I'm either going to blow my own trumpet on LinkedIn about something, I'm going to publish a small article on something. I mean, because we all are experts in our own field, right? So everyone has something they could publish a short, even three paragraph article on. Uh, in terms of work that they've done in the past year do I aim to just do that five times a year I schedule it like you say and just make myself do it because I think uh, Irish people can be very like well I don't want to blow my own trumpet or I don't want yeah. to annoy other people like that do I just diary on a Friday morning I'm going to pick up the phone to someone and say are you free for a coffee next week every Friday <laughs> like it is is that is it that simple Yes and no. So what I would say is get to grips with some. OK, so technically what I would say is get to grips with some pieces of technology. So um, Calendly can be your best friend. So you can set up a free profile and it's a link and it's connected to a Zoom account. You can get a free Zoom account and you connect this in and you send people a link and say, hey, I'd love to connect with you for a virtual coffee. Here's my diary availability. And you can say, right, I am going to put in two hours available on a Friday as an example and you can tweak it as you go along I'm constantly having to tweak my, tweak my diary but you can tweak it and then just send that out and people will book in when they're available so you just sort of say hey here's my availability so we don't have to have that discussion and they check in say hey yeah this works for me and we'll, we'll connect in and then it goes into both your diaries you don't have to worry about diarizing you don't have to worry about setting up zoom links it's all very easy once you've set that link up so that would be tip number one in terms of LinkedIn I would be looking to put out I would definitely have it have it there's a couple of things have the app on your phone if you don't already have the app on your phone and use it um I would always have it open in my browser I would spend 10 to 15 minutes looking at content engaging with content so it might be a comment it might be about an article somebody's posted I might find see th there's also different ways um so I have a blog it's networkinggene.ie and I wrote a blog recently on 10 different ways that you can connect and build relationships with people when you've only started networking. Because I think that's something that people really struggle with. You know, if you go to business networks, there's a, there's a mantra called giver's gain. And people are going, I have no idea what to give. I don't know anybody. How does it, what's that look like? So I've just given 10 different ideas of things you can do to start the process. Um, but I think that's actually a really important point is that when you go out into the networking world, um, there's givers. And there's takers and there's people who are there just to take and they're just I'm just there to get a relationship. I'm just there to get a sale. And um, the, the they're all about the take. They get found out very quickly. So the, the mindset with which you need to frame how you're going out to build relationships is how can I help you? So that can be a question that you can actually verbalize and ask, you know, in meetings when you're going to listen. How can I help you? Um, it is something you can do, but certainly when you're listening to people um, and you are listening to their story and whether they're, it's another solicitor in your company or whether you're out of different networks, your mindset has to be, how can I help you? But you're not going to know the answer to that question. And it may not be apparent immediately. It may not even be apparent for a year, two years. You mightn't know. But if you're building up that relationship with a person, you're going to keep them top of mind. It's also your 
responsibility to keep yourself top of mind and you're going to work actually I really like that person I, I don't know how I can help them today but I'd love to be able to help them so when there's an opportunity I'm going to bring them in on a project or I'm going to introduce them to you know it might be somebody who's doing payroll I'm going to introduce them to our HR manager because I think they're really really good you never know how you can help people but you have to keep an open mind about it and that's where the active listening comes in but the, it's framing that mindset of how can I help you and where you're listening to that person and what I call it, uh, what I create with other people is I create a digital Rolodex on them. So I'm filing all of this information. I have no idea when it's going to become useful, but something will trigger and I go, actually, I know the, exactly the right person for you. But here's the other thing as well is that I could put a hundred solicitors in a row. You're all very different. So how do you make yourself stand out? And I think this is back down to the LinkedIn and social media side of things that if you can take nuggets of information and there's way more going on in your head than you realize, because sometimes you might go with the paralysis by analysis, I have no idea what I'm going to write, but there's loads of content there. So just break it down and start small. Start by commenting on other people's content. Maybe post an article that you thought was interesting and say, here's why I thought it was interesting. Um, and then start developing your own content. But put something, make sure you're connecting and engaging with content at least a few times a week. But this is where you can spend maybe 15 minutes in the morning and you default that process in your diary and you create that discipline of updating your own content. What I'd say is really, really important as well on LinkedIn is asking for recommendations. And if you can give recommendations, so it might be that you give a recommendation to a supplier or to somebody else in your team. But if you're on a team and you are looking for a promotion or you've worked on a project and Barbara worked with Hannah on a project and she thinks you did a great job. Hannah, would you give me a recommendation, please? Be proactive about looking, looking at that because one of the first things that people do, particularly in career, because when they look at your profile, they look at what you're doing, what value do you add? So that's a question you need to write down. What value do I add? And your LinkedIn profile should answer that question. Why am I an interesting person to get to know? And then your recommendations are that third party um, con contribution about what you're doing in the work and the value that you bring to the table. But in terms of the time side of things, yes, it's about defaulting. And so I would always say to people, default networking to your diary because the process is pre, your prep, the during, what you're doing, whether it's a one-to-one -one or attending the meeting, and then it's your follow-up. What did you say you're going to do? And the follow-up might be at the start. It's about connecting with all of those people on LinkedIn and start connecting and following their social media. It might be about sending them on an article because you had this interesting conversation. It might be about introducing them to somebody in the company. Whatever it is, but schedule your time because this is how you build up your reliability and your credibility. Thanks, Jean. That's really helpful. And I think there are a lot of useful nuggets in there for everyone, certainly for me. So thank you very much for sharing your time with us. I know you're having a busy week this week. Um, I think that should wrap us up. We've no further questions unless anyone wants to pop one in now. Um, I think we'll include a link to Jean's blog and podcast um, when we put out the recording for this. So thanks very much again for your time, Jean. And thanks to everyone for attending.